Today on Blue 58, let's take a very quick look at the Chiefs. You may have heard they're without their starting quarterback who happens to be pretty good. I think you should still be concerned. Blue 58! Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue 58, the one and only podcast to thepowersweep.com. I am your host, John Meerdink. Happy to be with you here for another episode. Packers, Chiefs, Sunday night football, it's going to be a good one. Not maybe quite as good as it would have been had Patrick Mahomes not screwed up his knee a little over a week ago. There's not a whole lot we can do that. There have been some rumblings out of Kansas City that he's practicing and stuff like that. I will believe it when I see it. I'm going to be preparing for this game to the extent that it matters to the Packers, as though Matt Moore is going to be the Packers' starting quarterback. As you may have heard from our past episode, it's been a wild week here at uh, the Power Sweep's northern headquarters. So this is going to be a little bit of an abbreviated preview. But I thought we would ask three significant questions, take a look back at when the Packers and Chiefs last played, and then buckle down and do a prediction here. The three questions. First, who the heck is Matt Moore? Second, anybody else on the Chiefs' offense we should be aware of? Third, what about the defense? And I think those are that's a good approach for this this team and this matchup because the Chiefs are an offensive oriented team, and they did just lose the reigning MVP of the NFL, who could be perhaps the best quarterback in the game right now, depending on who you ask. So first and foremost, stepping in for Pat Mahomes, who the heck is Matt Moore? He is 35 years old and on his fourth NFL team and spent the 2018 season out of football entirely. And he was almost out of football until in uh, this year until Andy Reid gave him a call and said, hey, don't go be the offensive coordinator for that high school team. Come play quarterback for me instead. I'm guessing as rewarding as coaching high school football is, it doesn't quite pay as well as being a backup quarterback in the NFL. The, of course, assumption is that he was never going to have to play. And now here he is. So is Matt Moore actually any good? Well, not super great, actually, but not necessarily the worst backup quarterback in the world. He hasn't actually had to play that much over the balance of his career, especially after leaving Carolina. In the course of his career, he's only had one season where he's thrown more than 150 passes. It was pretty okay way back in 2011. For his career, Matt Moore is basically the stereotypical caretaker backup quarterback. He's there to get you out of a game with a win. If your backup or if your starter goes down, he's there to hold down the fort for a couple weeks and not much more than that. And the stats say he's been pretty effective at that. He's 15 and 15 in starts, not that quarterback wins are a thing. He's completed just under 60% of his uh, passes in his career. He's thrown 46 touchdowns against 36 interceptions. What do you want from a guy who's going to come in for less than 100 throws a season? Not too bad there. Matt Moore probably shouldn't be super scary on his own, but Andy Reid has a way of making people look good. And just look how he did last week coming in from a homes on short notice. Now, the Denver Broncos aren't going to scare a whole lot of people this year, but Moore was competent. He completed 10 of 19 passes for 117 yards through a touchdown. Classic screw it up, don't screw it up appearance, and they didn't. They came out with a win over the, the Broncos, who they probably would have beaten anyway. But still, Moore didn't do anything to screw it up for the Chiefs, and that's your job when you're the backup quarterback. It also helps that he's got a lot of great skill position players around him. So we move on to the second question, and anybody else in the Chiefs offense we should be aware of. While the Chiefs wide receivers are good, uh, Tyreek Hill versus Jair Alexander should be a good enough matchup to watch on its own, and there's going to be more than that to take a look at. The Chiefs running backs are at least interesting. LaShawn McCoy getting back together with Andy Reid is a good story on its own, but The real big marquee guy you got to be aware of, and this one is Travis Kelsey, the tight end. He is the straw that stirs the drink, as much as I hate that expression for the Chiefs. He makes it all go, uh, and he gets a lot of the attention on offense from the Chiefs and from their defensive opponents. He's been targeted with 100 or more passes each of the last four seasons. He has 80 or more catches each of the last three seasons to go with 1,000 or more yards each of the last three seasons as well. He is good, he's big, he's strong, he's fast, and he is productive. And as you may have heard, the Packers have been having some problems with tight ends. It looks like they're on track to have Darnell Savage back, but Kelsey is still going to be an enormous problem. So, To counter that, I wouldn't expect a ton of base defense from the Packers, which could expose them a little bit to the run. 
I think in this one, the best defense for the Chiefs might just be a good offensive performance for the Packers. That, at the very least, you would think would take the Chiefs' running game out of it a little bit, letting the Packers just focus on stopping the pass. And uh, if they can turn this into a little bit of a track meet, well, we'll get that get to that into a second. What what what's going to have to happen for the Packers to get to that point? They have to get through the Chiefs' defense. What about this Chiefs' defense? The Kansas City Chiefs don't have a great defense, but they're a little bit better against the pass than the run. Especially, in fact, they're considerably better against the pass than the run. The run numbers not super great, not super eye popping. Twenty fifth in total defense for whatever that's worth. Ninth against the pass, 26th against the run, just by yards. They are an interesting 12th in takeaways so far this season with 11. That is worth watching. The efficiency numbers are where the real story of the Chiefs defense start to show up. They are 4th against the pass by DVOA. Anytime somebody's in the top 5, you really got to take notice. But they are just 29th against the run, paging Aaron Jones. Who's the one player on the Chiefs defense you should be aware of? The correct answer is probably Chris Jones. A six foot, foot six, 310 pound defensive tackle. He has two sacks so far this year. Tied for first on the Chiefs as well with seven quarterback hits. Corey Lindsley is dealing with a little bit of a back injury. So this would be a matchup worth watching if Chris Jones wasn't injured. And it's looking like he may not be in the lineup for Sunday. So then from there, the easy answer is Frank Clark, the former Seahawks defensive end who the Chiefs paid pretty dearly to get in the offseason. They gave up a first and a third round pick in 2019, as well as a conditional second round pick in 2020, then paid him a five-year, $105 million contract, all to get Frank Clark from Seattle to Kansas City. But he is also injured. So you're getting pretty far down the list at that point. You should be aware of a pretty good Chiefs secondary. We won't run through all the names, but one of them is Bashad Breland. He is tied for second on the Chiefs with four passes defensed. I only point him out because he was in Green Bay last year. Uh, They also have the famous honey badger Tyron Matthew uh, in the back end of their secondary. He is always somebody you're going to want to be aware of. Let's rewind the clock to the last time the Packers and Chiefs played. Uh, This was one of the fool's gold games from early 2015 When the Packers started out hot, then Denver kind of broke them apart, and then things got really ugly down the stretch. This was back before the dark times of 2016 through 2017, 18, um, before things really started to, to get heated in Green Bay and then went on for a few more years. The Packers beat the Chiefs up pretty good in this one, up one side and down the other, thanks in part to Aaron Rodgers and an outstanding game, 24 of 35 passing for 333 yards and five touchdowns. Pro Football Focus infamously gave him a quite low grade in this one. Very, very silly. Uh, that debate was was just dumb. Um, and the black box of their ratings kind of hurt them a little bit there. They did try to open it up. Their explanation was not super compelling. All of it hinged kind of on a, an interception that should have happened. And to be fair, I give them credit for that. Aaron Rodgers had, threw a pass almost directly into the hands of a Chiefs defender uh, that day. But um, the rest of their grades... I mean, that was a little bit of a tough one to swallow. I think you would take a 24 of 35, 333-yard, five-touchdown performance no matter what the grade is. And that's what the Packers did and cruised to a 28 to 35, or 28 to 20, 38 to 28 win. Numbers can be hard on occasion. Uh, This game also serves as a bit of a reminder that the 2015 Packers defense was actually pretty good. There was a, a a bunch of guys on that team that year who had fairly good seasons. And a normal offensive year from the Packers probably results in a fairly deep playoff run in 2015. In this game alone, Clay Matthews had two and a half sacks. Mike Daniels had one and a half. J. Rohn Elliott, Joe Thomas, and Nick Perry had one apiece. Even Mike Neal chipped in half a sack. Mike Neal still has me blocked on Twitter for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why he blocked me in the first place. I was always kind of a Mike Neal fan. Back in the present, who's going to win this one? I think the Chiefs are a tough out here. Even with a backup quarterback, they've got skill position players coming out their ears. They're at home. Andy Reid is still a great coach. And the Packers have struggled containing both the run game and tight ends, two things that the Chiefs do pretty well. As I said earlier, I think the Packers' best bet in this one might be to turn this into a track meet. Make the Chiefs keep up with the Packers' offense with a backup quarterback and kind of bet that Matt Moore will make a mistake before Aaron Rodgers does. With the Chiefs relatively weak against the run 
and their front hobbled a little bit with Jones and Clark both banged up. I think that gives Aaron Jones room to run and Aaron Rodgers time to throw, and the Packers will win on Sunday night football against the Chiefs. Give me Packers 34, Chiefs 27. That's all I've got for you in this episode. I do appreciate you listening in. And thank you for bearing with us through a little bit of an odd week here. I do appreciate everyone who takes the time to find one of these episodes and listen in. If you liked what you heard today and want to help us keep things going, the best way to support us is by rating and reviewing us on iTunes. It does help more people find the show. Uh, you can rate right now from the straight from the Apple uh, podcast app. That is super helpful. You can also rate, I believe, on, on a couple of other apps. That does help more people find the show. So if you could go ahead and do that, that would be great. If you want to take your support to the next level, the best way to do that is to find us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash the power sweep one dollar per month helps us offset some of our costs for hosting the show, the site, all of those little administrative things that that add up um, on a month by month basis. And we do appreciate that because it helps us know that you value the content that we produce here and on the powersweep.com as well. And don't forget to check out our great t-shirts and sweatshirts by clicking the shop link at the power sweep. Com. If you've got an idea for the show or just want to say hi, reach us at thepowersweep.com on Facebook or on Twitter or by emailing thepowersweep1959 at gmail.com. We do appreciate everybody who takes the time to reach out because if you have a question, a thought, a bit, a bit of feedback, that just furthers our mission of helping everyone become smarter Packers fans. And as I always say, smarter Packers fans are better Packers fans and better Packers fans are what we all want to be. I'm your host, John Meerdink. We will see you next time on Blue 58.